Oh, ho, ho, the wait is over to the Foxborough faithful and all of our Patriots pals out there. Camp Week is here. Training Camp 2023 is at the doorstep, and we would like to welcome you to the latest episode of Six Rings and Football Things brought to you by WEEI, Odyssey, and 2400 Sports. And Andy Hart and I are so excited because we're welcoming you to Patriots Camp 2023 with a guy that is a gold standard kid's for how you get it done. He's an Ivy Leaguer. He played in the league for seven years. He loves good food. He knows how to crush a tailgate. He's a craft beer enthusiast. He knows how to put away the vitamin C's. He's on every network possible. He does football broadcasts and has his own podcast network with his name attached to it. And he joins us today as an Odyssey football insider. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go Pat's Camp 2023 with the one and only Ross Tucker. What's up, Ross? <laughs> Fellas, that's quite the intro. I just thought about this. The last time I was at Patriots training camp, I was supposed to be the second string center for the two-minute drill. And instead, they put in either Russ Hochstein or Gene Murkowski. Yep. And I was like, I oh, boy, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. And um, we, have a, we break it down as the O-line. And Dante Scarnecchia says, uh, Tuck, I need to talk to you. I'm like, what is going on? Like, I, 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 didn't, I didn't think I had a bad practice. I'm like, but I wanted to talk to him. Because I'm like, why did, I, why did I not get my chance with the two-minute two drill as a second-string center? He's like, um, uh, evidently, we trade you to Cleveland during practice. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I had already been cut three times in my career. So I was like traded. I was like, for what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Skarnicki has said, I don't know, probably a bag of balls. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I go in to the facility and uh, they tell me to shower or whatever. And then I'm going to get on, I'm going to talk to Belichick and Pioli. And then I'm going to get on the phone with the Browns. And, um, because, you know, that was when the Charles Bentley tore his knee up and Bob Howen, like, retired. I was thrilled. I was like, I'm going to start there. Like, this is amazing. I was actually like, think about that now, right? Like, going from the best team to the worst team, literally the best team in the NFL, mm -hmm. the Patriots in that era, and the worst team, the Browns. Most people would be like, oh, that's horrible. No, no, no. I was on the bubble in New England. I, and I was going to go to a place, start, like – I was thrilled to be traded from the best team to the worst team, which <laughs> makes no sense to people, right? So I go in the cold tub because I'm like, I might have to practice. I want to make a good first impression the next day in Cleveland, right? So I'm in the cold tub, and uh, Brady's sitting there. He's in the cold tub. Larry Izzo goes, what, are you going to piss in the cold tub before you leave? <laughs> and I was like, I was like, no. And everybody's like, what do you mean? And I was like, nah, I, I just got traded to Cleveland. <laughs> and Brady's reading like the Boston Globe or something. I'll never forget Brady was like, Brady hears me say that. And he, and he like looks up like, oh, man. And then looks back <laughs> down. <laughs> All you got was an all like, man? That's Brady, it. Brady looks up at me like, that sucks. <laughs> and then looks back down. Like he's reading like the economic section or like the <laughs> entertainment section. The only person I've ever seen that didn't read only the sports section, um, Brady and the cold dub of New England. So anyway, that's my last um, Patriots training camp uh, memory. You guys are still going with the six rings, right? It's been, it's been three years. How long are you guys going to hang on to that? Well, some How people. How long is that going to be like what you guys I talk about? Unfortunately, it seems like quite a while now because since we're talking about Belichick being on the hot seat, do they have a franchise quarterback? Oh, wait, 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 Andy, are you really? Are, are people really talking about that? Oh, that's been a oh, big 100%. deal. Yeah, recently, yeah. Tom Curran went on uh, the Dan Patrick show, and he kind of ignited the talk that's been simmering. It's been simmering like, you know, what are we doing here? He's 71. He's like the oldest coach ever. He's the greatest coach ever. But last year, he made maybe the worst decision ever when he made Matt Patricia the offensive coordinator. Yeah, there is, there is uh, some simmering here going on at – so do you, what do you think? Bill Belichick on the hot seat. Would Robert Kraft walk away from Bill Belichick? Well, so here's my question for you guys first, before I dive into that. All right. What do the fans say? What, like, if that's a brought up on talk shows, yeah. is it, 
no way. We will never feel like, like, give me like the breakdown. And the reason why I'm asking you that is because I think that matters to Mr. Kraft. Like, okay. I, I think how the people feel it would be a big factor in the decision. So the in Bill we trust, remember that phrase, in Bill we trust forever. Like, you let Adam Vinatieri go, you do this, you trade Logan Mankins, in Bill we trust, in Bill we trust, because it may look kind of crappy in March and April, but by December, you're usually looking pretty good, and you're yeah. like, okay, we're back in playoffs. Well, the in Bill we trust crowd is growing smaller and smaller by the year, and I do it. It's a minority now. I think really. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. I think oh yeah. No, have, no joke. No joke. I don't. I don't. The number you always get in trouble when you throw out percentages, and there may be twenty five percent. Let's just use easy numbers. Twenty five percent in Bill we trust. Twenty five percent old man's lost it. Game has passed him by, and then you have that fifty percent in the middle that I think is kind of dangling in the breeze, wondering. Which way we gonna go when you can still get my vote? So it's yeah. so funny too because they totally butchered it by letting Tom leave. Yes, and by they totally butchered yes. it by letting Tom leave by disrespecting him when he asked for the contract uh, bump, yep. and they gave him like five million in incentives. Tops. Like after all the discounts he had taken. It was just so insulting. I can't believe he handled it as classy as he did. I would have gone scorched mother. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would have yep. gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that. You yeah, would have gone. I mean, for, yeah, like, like Brady's Moab. way classier than I could ever be. I've taken a pay. I've taken less than all these other guys for all these years. I want like <laughs> something reasonable. And you give me five million in incentives. How about five Super Bowl rings? You, I, I'm at, like that's twice now. I almost like said okay, something the show. I shouldn't let say. Let it go. I, let I, it no, go. it's good. But here's the thing. Here's what happened. That enabled that that set things in motion for Brady to leave. Mm-hmm. Brady leaving and winning a Super Bowl elsewhere stoked the conversation about how much of the success was Brady versus Belichick. Now. That still would have happened when Brady retired. But by the way, he played three more years, so it wouldn't have started until now. And even at that point, you wouldn't have evidence of him going somewhere else and and winning the whole thing. So Belichick, I'll tell you, I'll give you guys another insight, right? I tell people this all the time. I do a lot of public speaking, and they're always like, you know, like to companies or organizations, they're always like, Tell me about Belichick and how he, his leadership and how he runs the organization. They're like so fascinating. I'm like, um, okay, well, 8 a.m. every day, he shows the five worst plays from the practice of the game the day before. Your entire motivation from his standpoint is negative reinforcement to not be on that video. And here's where I think Belichick really miscalculated. I think he thought that that was the Patriot way and that that was the biggest reason for the team's success. He's a brilliant schematic coach. That's, that, let's separate that. But from the culture standpoint, I think he thought it was his negative reinforcement low light video thing. What I found... And what was even the case for me in OTAs is like Brady, when I was at center, right? This is OTAs, like March. Don't even have, I mean, May, you don't even have a shoulder pads on, right? If I was at center and Brady was a quarterback, he would look at me and be like, all right, Ross, you and me, great snap first, right? Now, keep in mind, guys, I'm 26, 27. I've played in 40, I've started 25 games for Buffalo and Dallas. I played in 45. When he looked at me like that, with how intense he is, I never wanted to snap the ball so well in my whole life, right? <laughs> like, I I didn't want to let him down. He gets there so early. He's so hard on himself. It's very clear how much he cares and how, much, how passionate he is. My belief is that the biggest driver for success, specifically on offense, but really the whole team, is that you didn't want to let Brady down. 
<laughs> because you knew how invested he was. I think that is a much in life. Think about all of us. I think it's a much bigger motivator to not want to let down someone you like and respect. And you will never find a single person, I believe, to say a negative word about Brady, which is just unbelievable. Like hundreds and hundreds of guys, right? You're, it's a much better form of motivation to not want to let down someone you like and respect than it is fear from being made fun of on a low light video, negative reinforcement. I mean, Belichick basically just put him on the table a couple of years ago when he lets Tom Brady go and decides to move on and wants to prove that he can do it his way as well. And to Andy's point, you know, there is a portion of the fan base that's going to ride or die with Belichick. They're the hoodie believers and in Bill we trust. And then there's a lot of them that were initially frustrated and disappointed after Brady left. And then last year with the, as I like to call it, the reverse engineered Matt Patricia offense, which was more offensive than it was an offense. Now there's a lot of doubt out there. And I do believe that some people believe that this may be his last kick at the can. We even had a poll on our website, Ross, that said a lot of fans would like to see him traded for multiple first round draft picks the same way he came in for multiple first round draft picks in the year 2000. So first of all, he's going to coach till he breaks the record. Right. Yep. There, there's yep. like, so if the Patriots get rid of him, he's going to go somewhere else. It, as much as he hates the media, that's how much he loves NFL films and like the history of yep. the game. He's going to break that record. Here's the problem. And I think Kraft, this is just my opinion, right? What do I know? You guys are there every day. I think Kraft wants him to break the record with the Patriots. But it's 19 games, right? So yeah. is it gonna is he gonna wait three years? That could be three years. And um it feels highly likely, guys, that they're gonna be in last in the division this year. I mean. It would actually be an impressive coaching job if they're not. And I did rankings for the 33rd team. I still had Belichick as the second best coach in the NFL because he was the best schematic coach I had. And I had Parcells and Joe Gibbs and Schottenheimer and a bunch of really good ones. I think more than anything else, Belichick, the GM, has screwed Belichick, the coach. Now, the Patricia decision and... Whatever he was doing a quarterback, that's a little bit different. But you look at them, and it's like, man, compared to the Jets roster, compared to the Dolphins, I mean, the Dolphins are loaded. I didn't really – until you look at it, the Dolphins are loaded. Um, and obviously the Bills have been really good, and they clearly have, I think, the, the, the worst quarterback in the division. I think they're in a bad spot. And I, I think the end of this season will be the telltale – they feel like they'll win seven or eight games. Maybe he gets them nine. But the in December in Foxborough, are there going to be people at the stadium that are angry or disappointed? Or are they going to not show up? Uh, I think Kraft would be okay if it's anger and frustration. Apathy I think Kraft would feel like he needs to do something. So leaping off that, because I think we all can understand that the NFL is a quarterback league and a lot of times excitement, even late in the year, you know, you can be four and 12, but if you feel like you got a young franchise quarterback, that's making plays, running around building for the following year, people get excited. And therefore Mac Jones, year three, third offensive coordinator in three years, Bill O'Brien is the savior. That's the expectation in Patriot nation that you bring in Bill O'Brien and he is going to fix Mac, and he's the reason you're going to be good again. Do you believe in the Bill O'Brien-Mac Jones combo being able to do that this year? I think it'll be better than last year. Eh, it doesn't take much. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's got to be hard not to. Yeah. Um, You'd probably do better than Matt Patricia did. Yeah, And I yet still they were on the verge of the playoffs, though. What? What's that? I'm sorry. Just like the, It's amazing that they were as dysfunctional as they were, Ross, but they were like three or four games you could point to a moment where – the stupid lateral in Vegas, the fumble by Ramondre against Cincinnati. They were like, but on by the, the way, but by the way, like that's what stunned me about last year. They did some really unpatriot like things. Yeah. Like they did things that I was thinking, 
that never would have happened when I was there. Like, what's happened that, like, blocked kicks and kicks returned for touchdown? Like, that's a common thing now. What's happened that Jacoby Myers thought that that was a good idea? Like, I, I'm I'm blown away by um, such uncharacteristic Patriot behavior. Like, they were objectively – not a well-coached team last year. Like they nope. didn't come across as being a well-coached team. Wasn't so close. It's kind of wild that, to your point that they were kind of close when they don't have a great roster and they weren't a well-coached team. Then and yet they were still right there in the mix. Yeah, some of it was the competition. They lucked out where they played a lot of bad young third-string quarterbacks, and they had a a relatively good defense that kind of feasted in those opportunities, but they I've called them pretenders the last two years. I actually think that the poor coaching to your point has been the last two years. I think the, the worst two years of coaching that I've seen in new England and I've seen them all. I've been here from day one were the last two years. And I think that's played into the Belichick hot seat. Like whether it's him or not, it might be cam accord is overmatched as the special teams coordinator, but you hired cam accord as your special teams coordinator. So you know, you're on top of the organizational depth chart, Bill, and that's why it goes into it. But I think that's why so much pressure falls on on O'Brien and Mac Jones, because now the expectations, you guys fix it. You guys clean it up. Mac, you're a franchise quarterback. You got Kirk Herbstreet, 1,000% behind Mac Jones. 1,000%. You can't be any more behind him. Although I don't know if Patriots fans are as behind him as Kirk Herbstreet is. Yeah, I mean, I look, I, I think um... – I think Mac will play fine. Um, fine. Mac. I think you're kind of in a weird Mac. spot. I think you're yeah. kind of in a weird spot. I don't think he's a top 10. I don't think he'll ever be a top 10 quarterback. I don't even know if he'll be in the top half of the league. I think you'll be like in like, you're going to get into that zone. Even if he plays well, I feel like you're in that zone where it's like, okay, we can be competitive with this guy. He's the 17th best quarterback in the NFL. We can win games. We can maybe even win a playoff game. But have you guys seen Patrick Mahomes play football? Have you seen Josh yeah. Allen play football? Have you seen yeah. even Joe Burrow? Like, yeah. AFC's rough, bro. So maybe Belichick can find a way to get over to the NFC somehow. <laughs> I, it, it, he might I mean, we, wish after this season. It very well might. I mean, and, and I know we got to uh, let you jump in a second, Ross, and this has been awesome. We could go down this uh, – whole much much longer and have more fun with this but uh you know not only is it just like Mahomes and I've been watching quarterback series on Netflix and my respect and admiration for him and just quarterbacks in general is through the roof at this point and Allen and don't sleep on Trevor Lawrence Jacksonville I think is going to be a sneaky excellent team this year as well Lamar could be healthy he's got a wide receiver I mean the AFC is Herbert's a stud so yeah Herbert and now he's good. got a real offensive coordinator he's got that boob as a head coach but he's got that a good offensive coordinator now, and they just drafted high with a weapon. Eckler's pissed. Uh, it's going to be difficult, and the AFC East is loaded as well. But from your perspective, I just wanted to get your take on this. Uh, Patriots drafted big on defense with Keon White. Christian Gonzalez fell to them. Marte Mapu. We think the defense will be even better. But what do you think between Adrian Clem on offensive line, Bill O'Brien, Mac Jones on a redemption tour? What will be the thing that looks most improved or most different this season on the field for the Pats? Yeah, I would say I would say it's Mac Jones. I mean, I, I I'm I I'm glad they added those guys they did on defense. I know people that love Marty Mapu, like love that guy. Um, I thought their defense was already pretty good last year, right? So it's interesting that they went so defense heavy um, in the first three rounds like that. So I think their defense will be good. I, I do think it'll be Mac Jones. You know, there's really two ways it can go, right? Where it's like Mac Jones reestablishes himself as the franchise quarterback for the Patriots moving forward, or people start calling for Zappi. Yes. I think it'll be the former, not the latter. I, I think Bill O'Brien and Mac Jones will work together. And I think that he will reestablish himself as the guy in new England. Maybe they'll even give him a contract extension and um, the commitment to mediocrity will be on. Oh, Oh, oh. that cuts oh. deep. 
the oh. commitment to mediocrity. Well, I mean, we were joking before the podcast. Ross Ross dinged us with what could easily be the new title of Six Rings in Football Things. He goes, all right, Patriots suck. Let's talk about it. I mean, <laughs> th- I mean, we're in a hole, Ross. It's and when we Patriots you know, this, don't suck. I know. I was mediocrity. Just kidding. I loved it. I Ross, I, I, I was loved just it. kidding, but it. <laughs> it's just funny to me that the podcast is called Six Rings. The shows. Not- I mean. It's been a while now. It's been like the Raiders. Years. Like that's a long the, time. How long and the Raiders think been? Because be like, that's any Patriot fan you talk to about Belichick or about the team. Like that's what they still hold on to, and that's 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 great. They should. I just think like, at what point do they stop talking about that? Is it ten uh, years? Is it seven? Like at what point is it like, dude? Like. Like we we got cell phones now. Like like you know, it's like let's move on. <laughs> I mean, put it this way: we all work for Odyssey in one capacity or another. Our parent company felt pretty comfortable naming this Six Rings, not thinking they'd have to do artwork for Seven Rings anytime soon. Yeah, <laughs> safe logo. <laughs> Uh, he is an Odyssey NFL insider. He is the man behind the Ross Tucker Podcast Network. You can hear him on football broadcasts on the radio, WIP in Philadelphia. He's a Pennsylvania native. He's awesome. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to catch up with him again soon. And maybe, just maybe, we'll actually get to have a beer with you if you make your way up to Fox's Borough or to one of the local breweries. Weymouth. I'll meet you in Weymouth. Ian Weymouth. I, yeah. See, on the South Shore, kid, Ross Tucker, thank you very much. At Ross Tucker NFL, pleasure having you on Six Rings. Likely still to be called Six Rings at Football Things for a while, buddy. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a great season, pal. How come we can't get more guests like that? Well, because most people are too buttoned up to just, you know, live life and mix on in with the Six Rings boys who like to be a little looser. We got T-shirts on. By the way. I'm not... (laughs) Is that are you selling that now? And can I put it on my site as well? Sure, sure. I'm not Andy's wearing a t shirt. I'm wearing one for vitamin C, the brewery that's kind enough to send us beers where I'm having my beer release party. And of course, Ross is a big fan. Andy has a t shirt on that should be his tattoo skin. It says, I'm not for everyone. Yep. <laughs> says the story. And Dude, uh, uh Ross Rod, Tucker no, may but- not be for everyone based on uh, the commitment to mediocrity that he concluded <laughs> with. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think he minded that I but that I let loose what we were talking about before the show as well. I mean, he was very kind to join us for the time he did. But it's that mix of conversation, candor, and experience that he has that makes him relatable, that makes him so successful right now. Like, he's a, he's a self-made man as well. Like, seven years in the league, but he turned his relationships, his experience, and his intellect into a brand. Kind of like the way guys like Pat McAfee have. Um, obviously, a different cat altogether with... Uh, a different energy and style, but I appreciate the fact that it's not just, and that's why I say like, how come we can't get more guys like that on six rings and beyond? It doesn't sound football-y. He's not like, Oh, you know, a football guy. Well, guys, when you break it, like he just sounds like a real person who loves all the same things that we built our lives around because he is. And it's the same reason why you see, you know, these networks struggle to rotate through pregame show, postgame show people, because it's not easy to be, objective, personable, analytical, like kind of blend it all together in a, into a package that works. Mm-hmm. And he does. And I want to, uh, as we break down kind of what he said and talk about it, he nailed it with his discussion of Bill Belichick. I mean, Bill literally told me in a press conference once, and I'm get, I, I've tried to go back and find it, and it was a long time ago. I'm not real big on positive reinforcement. And Ross said, use the other the negative reinforcement the embarrassing the fear and I have always thought and the way he painted Tom Brady's role in that was interesting because I always thought one of the guys that was key was Romeo Cronell in the early years of the Mm -hmm. dynasty you're not going to find a nicer happier more smiling man than Romeo Cronell and I always thought he was a key uh counterbalance okay Yeah. yeah between the players and Bill and adding some human side to things like smiling enjoy life kind that bill doesn't always bring to the table but ross is right tom brady has always at least publicly and for the most part tried to stay positive right he's talked about it he tries to bring positivity to environments and ross is right i can tell you from first person when you talk to brady he looks like you remember barkley said he had dinner with him and he was like I don't even know what he said. I just fell in love with like his gaze and I was right. in the aura of Tom Brady. 
He's it's a temperature true. changer. Yes, he's got. He has that magnetism, he and he doesn't he's also give a rat's ass what you're talking beautiful. about. But he makes yeah. you feel like he gives a rat's ass what you're talking about. It makes you feel like you're in the presence of someone special. And for Ross to say that, and I've heard so many people say that you don't want to let Tom down. You know how hard Tom works. You know Tom is mm -hmm. invested and cares about you. And you know Tom learned your name when you when you arrived as player sixty seven, and then. Now he's relying on you because you're player 37 and you're in the offensive rotation and you're in his world. There's a lot of truth to that. And I do wonder in the, the second half of the dynasty, the post Tom Brady years, and as things have evolved, who is that? What is that? How does that positivity, how does that counterbalance of the neg, the fear? Cause that's one of those things they always talk about, right? Would you rather be feared or liked and respected? And he's right. Yeah. People fear Belichick. You lived in fear of your job and fear of your performance and fear of everything. But, but Andy, here's like a million different thoughts from what you just said. And I guy I, all the way, however many miles separate us as we record this camp preview podcast for the 2023 season, I could feel the joy coming out of you. I felt like you were seen and acknowledged when Ross was saying like, that didn't really seem like a well-coached team. Like, well, it wasn't just like that. Why? Right, Cause it wasn't. Exactly. No, that wasn't. And now you cut back to what they were and how well coached they were in the second half of the dynasty, uh, the double dynastic run, as I call it, but also back those early years. How the hell is that sort of hierarchy going to ever get any better than Belichick in his prime Pioli dealing heat as the as sort of president of operations and, and drafting like a champion. And then you've got Charlie Weiss and Romeo Cornell. And I know Weiss could be tough Skarnecchia at, at, at all. And I remember you talking about Romeo Cornell being this sort of intermediary or having his sort of positive, affable energy counterbalance the negative, the negative reinforcement of Belichick. What always sort of stuck with me was at the end of Super Bowl 39, there's this famous photograph of like Roman Pfeiffer and I think Willie McGinnis both hugging Romeo Cornell because they knew he was moving on. And he has this mile wide grin and I could feel their love for him from that. It's one of my absolute favorite Patriots photos. And so I could always just sort of like, glean that joy that he brought to them while still being a tough son of a bitch probably at times when he needs to be uh and bill continues look we saw it as recently as a couple weeks uh, just over a week ago with the deandre hopkins thing bill just like you've talked about he gets stuck in a spot he doesn't get succession plans because he's myopic of focus at times he does his thing where it's like no the patriot way we value you at a number and that's what it's going to be they obviously told DeAndre Hopkins in no uncertain terms, we could use you. We like you. We, we want you here. But they kind of like Bill just kind of Bella chicked it up, it seems again. And so now we head into camp hoping that all these other guys they signed during the offseason, the Gesickis, the Jujus, uh, re-sign like Devontae Parker, eh, Taekwon Thornton and his soft tissue potential are going to be able to make up for a wide receiver number one who's still top 10 in Madden game ratings falling into their lap and them deciding, eh, we don't value you as much as Tennessee. I mean, I, I still just think that was a, a whiff, and that's what's probably going to keep us at six rings for a while. Oh, yeah. Ross was right. I think we're safe at six rings for the foreseeable future in this commitment to mediocrity, uh, which is appropriate probably for the podcast to mirror the football team. I think we're Pretty committed to mediocrity here. Uh, yeah, sometimes you never know. Sometimes we'll sneak a fastball by you. Well, sometimes we sometimes we have good stuff coming right out of the bullpen. All right, we could just we could sit in what Ross said for another hour or two. Uh, but that was great. And uh, don't forget to go back. Make sure you follow Ross at Ross Tucker NFL on the socials, the Ross Tucker podcast, and hopefully we'll get him back here again soon. Like he said, he's going to be doing a couple games on the radio for Westwood One. So if he's in the area, uh, maybe we can hang out and catch. I say up we record ball. a podcast. At vitamin C. Live I say, drinking. Let's go. If he's coming up for the Dolphins game Sunday night football, he'll be in the area the Saturday night before. We do a little live six rings with Ross while we're putting a few. I like where you, I like where your head's at, kid. Your head's in a good spot before camp, Andy Hat. I like where you're at. See, that's positive reinforcement. Yeah, see? Uh, yeah. yeah, the positive coaching alliance of which Bill Belichick is not a uh, active <laughs> member. He does not have a membership. Oh, God. All right. So here we are recording this to, uh, just now under two days from the official start of camp 2023. We will be there on Media Hill watching the practice. And I was thinking this morning, you know, we're excited. But at the same time, something 
popped into my head. It was, I think it was when you were doing your hit last week on Gresham Fourier, uh, where you talked about at the end of minicamp, the Patriots started to look a little bit like the Patriots did last season. Like they didn't look terribly good at the end of minicamp 2023. And that sort of crept into my head today. Like, what do you think we're going to see at the start of practice on Wednesday and then into Thursday? Are we going to see something that looks wildly different? Is it crisp? Is it machine-like? Is there any chance we're going to see choppy waters? Uh, or is it going to probably just be camp with its ups and downs and growing pains? The totality will be the last part. Camp, ups, downs, growing pains. I think out of the gates, you'll see some positivity because I think these players are jazzed up. I really do. I really think there is a positive energy that is in part due to Bill O'Brien's arrival and the confidence they have in their coach and the scheme yep. and where they're going. The question is, once they start doing more 11 on 11s, going ones versus ones, going against a defense that I think everybody is really hopeful will be good and versatile and athletic and all those things, can they match up with that? match wits, match talent, match, you know, personnel. I don't know. I think out of the gates, I'm going to make a bet that you will see 98% positive coverage coming out of Foxborough on Wednesday. It'll be talk about crisp offense. Ooh, Mac looked, Ooh, there was Juju was on the field. Ooh, Trent Brown was on the, Ooh, there's energy. Like, I think that's going to be the vibe you'll get. I think the warts and the hiccups and those things will probably wait till Monday, Tuesday of next week, the pads go on, the dog days hit. Now the defense is throwing some blitzes at Calvin Anderson off the right side and Max under pressure and like those types of things. But no, I expect positivity out of Foxborough on Wednesday for the start of training camp. And you should, God damn it. Excuse me. Pardon wow, me. Wow. Wow. But you should. This yeah, is no, of time. course you should. My I God. mock you when you have positivity in the face of reality. Mm -hmm. And that's a problem. Like if you're sucking and you're yeah, they can still make the play. <laughs> well, they sucked, but that's the crazy thing about this team. We talked about it with Ross. We talked about it ad nauseum. Despite all the warts, despite the dysfunction, despite that torpid offense and the boneheaded decisions made last year, your two kickoff returns by Naeem Hines, who probably won't be making any kickoff returns against the Patriots nope. this year. Don't have to worry news. about that problem. <laughs> Sadly, significant injury for Naeem Hines earlier this morning in, uh, at the start of camp for Buffalo. But you are like a half a football away against Buffalo. Uh, all those uncharacteristic things that Ross mentioned, uh, Stevenson lateral, Myers lateral, the uh, Stevenson fumble at the end of the game, all these unpatriot-like things, which you, to your credit, have now started to call more typically patriot things because we're seeing more things like that. We have to stop years. judging them off of the double dynastic run and the efficiency with which the team was run under Tom Brady and start looking at them like this team. You can love them similarly, but they're not the same team. And so it's, despite all those, those boneheaded plays and the blunders last year, they were still like on the doorstep of the playoffs. Whether they deserved it or not, not. that's not an issue. They did not but they still almost got it every so, year in every sport. A bad team makes the playoffs, right? Yep. Like that there are playoff teams and teams that make the playoffs. Yep. You were almost a team that made the playoff. You weren't anywhere near a playoff team. Those are two different things. And mm -hmm. it's why I continue to say, unfortunately, I think you can be a significantly more stable, competent football team this year, a better football team mm -hmm. and not make the playoffs. Yes, I we said way back when, when we started trotting out our C words for the 2023 campaign, consistency, competence at all. Cotton candy. Yeah, cotton candy, cranky, like cotton. <laughs> less cantankerous. Uh, we, you, you, you could see this team even potentially finish eight and nine, but it could look a drastically different eight and nine than last year's team where they don't eyeball make mistakes. Test. Exactly, passing the eyeball test. They'll be less frustrating and hopefully more entertaining harping on. And I introduced this to John Lyons on Sunday when he filled Ooh. in for you on the Sunday, Sunday morning to afternoon program. I taught him the two Andy Hart principles. One entertain me because it's professional sports. And two, if Andy Hart had his own coaching radio station, he would broadcast from W E E a energy effort and attitude. And if we Look see all of that, ah, see, come on, dude, you just give me a week off and a little sunshine, some clam chowder. And I, and I can actually uh, do my job 
modestly. I'm not going to say commitment to mediocrity, the commitment to mediocrity. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, I, I, th I would be happy with that team. And I'm sure Robert Kraft, while he wants that playoff spot back and he wants the clicks and he wants all the headlines and he wants the Patriots to be relevant, if not dominant again in the media and in the hearts and minds of the NFL overall, let alone Pat's nation. At least if you don't get flexed out, at least if you're not making good morning football or NFL network or sports center for the wrong reasons. And you're making it for the right reasons. Like, look at this hit by Marte Mapu. Look at this pick by Christian Gonzalez. Look at this long bomb hauled in by Tyquan Thornton. Then at least they'll be happy because we have now seen the frigate turn around in the canal. If it's still banging into the wall and they're making dumb plays, laterals, fumbles, Mac Jones is yelling at people on the sidelines. There, there will be trouble in Patriots paradise by the end of the season. So, Andy, let's uh, let's take a look at what's going to kick off in just a couple of days. I, I have a feeling I know, but just um, give the listenership uh, a little bit of a here's who my my both my good and my other eye are going to be on for the first day or two of camp. Well, the first eye has to be on the guy who theoretically post DeAndre Hopkins post Jacoby Myers is supposed to be your number one receiver who we've yet to see the nerd himself football nerd himself according to Mac Jones Juju Smith Schuster the fact that he was still dealing with that knee injury but by all accounts it looks like he should be on the field now we will have some information coming in the uh, the initial days as the veterans arrive you could have guys go on PUP so that's a list right. to watch so we have Michael Wenu and Cody Davis and one other player thus far yeah, Mike, I went to Cody Davis and someone, uh, Tavai, the one of the, Tavai. oh, justice Tavai, justice yeah. Tavai. Yeah. I wasn't right. Whatever. Okay. Yep. He's not even the good Tavai. Never mind. A guy I was, was going to say, here's what we'll be in a couple weeks to be Tavai. Thanks for coming. Uh, very good. Well done. You did need a vacation. You're actually yeah. decent today. Um, but <laughs> Juju Smith Schuster, right. He's, he, he's supposed to be your upgrade over Jacoby Myers. You chose him over Jacoby Myers. So therefore he's probably supposed to be your number one receiver. Where does he fit? How does he look? Hopefully, first of all, does, is he on the field running around right. doing route? Mm -hmm. Like he is the first one. Um, I would say second is the simple, obvious one. The guy we've talked about nonstop in conjunction with Bill O'Brien, Mac Jones, like everything right. Mac Jones is going to do is going to be worthy of observation because his histrionics, his emotions, his self-flagellation have been the stories the last couple of years. His emotion was seen as a positive, his first training camp fighting with Cam Newton for the starting job, the swagger that guys like Bourne and Judon immediately said, well, I didn't know this young buck out of Alabama had this kind of swagger. The hyper-competitive well, super psycho out of Alabama. Yeah, yeah barking good. at Saban, all that. We, all want, we needed that. We needed right. that in the face of losing Brady and Cam Newton's lackluster 2020. Lackluster being nice. Um, okay. We had to step up from commitment to mediocrity when Cam <laughs> Newton was a quarterback. Uh, but yes, his... Mac Jones, emotion, energy, all of it was a positive, his rookie training camp and season. Somewhere along the line from May through December of last year, his emotion, his competitiveness became a negative, right? He irritated the coach. He did this. He blah, blah, blah. So we're going to watch everything Mac does. You know, is he happy? Mm -hmm. Is he smiling? How's he interacting with Bill O'Brien? That is going to be a, a storyline that will play out throughout uh, late July and, and early August. And now I'll give you a couple wild cards because those I think are obvious ones. Mm -hmm. And I mean, okay. another obvious one, Christian Gonzalez. Uh, how's he covering? Like, I'd like to people know the obvious ones, what we're looking for. Right. And I'll so, be geeking out on special teams like Bryce Barringer. Absolutely. Right. blasted it. Look at well, Chad. Well, look at the I mean, look at the cannon on Chad Ryland and his leg, too. <laughs> um. So, uh, but the running back position, I thought on, it, you said it, <laughs> the running back position on anyone not named Ramondre Stevenson. That's Kevin exactly Maddox, where I was going to go. And Ty Montgomery, my guy from last year, who Ivan fears said, watch out. If he stays healthy, he's going to be a factor in this offense. Well, if, if he stays healthy, it'll be 2017 all over. It's going to be 2018. And we're, we're in green Bay on the way to losing the NFC championship. Um, again. But yeah, he's in there. Um, another guy who I'm going to, check the pronunciation because Ross Tucker said it very differently than we say it. Marty Mapu. Yeah. He called Marte yeah. Mapu is how yeah. we say it. He mm -hmm. says Marty Mapu. Um, that guy, the young yep. um, versatile player who was one of the stories of, of OTAs and, and the summer. Mini and is he going to tone it down? Because you're, you're the one who 
let us know that the try he, hard. Yeah, he's a wicked try hard. But like, is he going to be in there trying to blow people up early in practice to send a message, prove a point, and get a gig? McCordy said he's so impressed by this guy thus far, and hopefully we'll be able to get DMAC on the pod in a couple weeks to give us a little camp insight once he's had a chance to check things out in Foxborough once again himself. Uh, he believes he can play linebacker and safety, that he's got the speed, mm -hmm. the talent, the versatility. This that He may be – he may – We'll have all eyes on Gonzalez, who we know we need, who we, we know they needed. And Keon White will slowly, hopefully, turn into a force. And while we while we see if Uche and Duggar are going to blossom and blow up this year because they're in contract seasons, Marte Mapu may end up being the biggest impact player from the 2023 draft for the Patriots if he is as good as some have labeled and hyped him up to be. Yeah, well, first of all, I'm not sure he can be as good as some are hyping him up to be. Uh, that's, an, that's, that's a lot of hype. I think he is the most big interesting player because oh, you could sell me on he plays like 60% of snaps combined between safety and linebacker, and he's a key rotational player. He's part of your, whatever that is, top 17 or so that are going to play on defense with regularity. You could sell right. me on that. Because mm -hmm. I think they would like him to be. I think he has some interesting talent and versatility. You could also tell me that he is lost as a ball in tall grass, as Parcells would say. He doesn't actually latch on to anything, and you're like, no, nah, it's just not working. He ends up not doing anything. Like I think the spectrum is wide open as to what Marty Mapu um, could be, as uh, Ross Tucker would say it. But he he's the biggest unknown. He's the most interesting of the – maybe of not just the rookies, maybe of anybody on the roster. I mean, right. that list of most intriguing or interesting or – questionable and i think that puts a little you know negative tint on it but there's some of those guys that you really don't know what you're going to get and you might need to get the good side and if you get the bad side you could be in trouble so oh another one of the obvious ones and, by and we way. also don't need that by the way with the Marte mapu like there's already a safety who just wants to just crash the party and destroy the line on every play it's jabril peppers i like so him. we I love. I told you, wakes up every morning, pours a nice bowl of violence, put milk on yep. top of it, devours it, and likes, and then just gets into football. He's nineteen ninety four called. They want their safety back. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, like I love the I love the Chuck fact Cecil that he looks, looks like, like dude. That guy's nuts. <laughs> wow. Even even Ronnie Ronnie Lott is like okay. Right. May not cut a finger off, but this kid's good. Uh, he's healthier. Belichick loves him. You could like. I think he's going to be a great fit. Jalen Mills. There's a guy that'll be worth keeping a good eye on because. He's transitioning from cornerback back to a position he loves, playing free safety, taking over for Devin McCourty as well. Uh, Maybe. Ma uh, what's that? Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. We we'll also see. think there's That's a very why we easy, camp it up. There's a very easy path to him saying, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll go back to corner. Okay. Sorry, All I right. didn't know Jack Jones was going to prison. I did. I did. I thought I was. Wow. I that problems. decision won't come for a while. But Jack, sorry, Jack Jones has to be in court. Fine. I'll play corner. I know John Jones. And then, interesting, um, how far into, before I get to like the part of the field, my eyes will be squarely set on every day at camp. How far into, if at all, are you into quarterback on Netflix? I am four episodes in, I think. Yeah. I'm uh, So I'm halfway through episode eight. So I'm going to finish that uh, later this evening after I do the Rich Keefe show. Gotta say, episode five, you'll find extremely fascinating, if not. Uh, Fullbacks? No, but no, it's not the James. <laughs> uh, Kirk Cousins breaking down film in anticipation of the Patriots game. Last oh, yeah, yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Yep. And how he goes over the idea that because the Patriots don't have the length and the size to keep up, if they decide to play man versus playing zone, Minnesota feels like they have the advantage. Spoiler alert. They did. And that's exactly what ultimately, and uh, along with a couple of quintessentially 2022 miscues by the Pats, Shot them in the blank and the foot as well and gave Minnesota the win. So very interesting to see how that played out. Andy, I'm going to have my eyes square on the offensive line. I still think this is the big, like a win is on the pup. He'll likely come back. I want to see the two new big hosses, Jake Andrews as well. City. So, and Antonio Maffi. the tackle position until I see otherwise is what's going to give me the night sweats and make me afraid this offense just will not be able to be what it needs to be. Now, Adrian Clem, when I asked Ross Tucker what's going to make the biggest difference on the team in 2023, Adrian Clem's a viable answer. We're still sort of like forgetting or 
just sleeping on the fact that as Matt Patricia was overwhelmed and out of place as play caller last season, he was also supposed to be coaching the offensive line, but he was so in, uh, in over his head. He was so on skates last year that he basically just supposedly handed it over to Billy Yates. Who's like, I'm kind of new at this too. Uh, and the line was a mess. So now at least you got Clem in there, someone who's been doing this a while and Bill O'Brien. I think the coaching will be better is the talent and the health there. Uh, that the, the tackle talent is going to be a question now. Um, there's been a late surge of positivity here in the summer via social media for Trent Brown. He's working out. He's in the gym. He's getting cars delivered to Gillette. The, like, I know. Feeling so good. He gets a fresh card and Kendrick Bourne is dapping him up. And normally, you know, I would poo poo the hell out of all of this crap on social media. <laughs> but because, oh, footwork. Did footwork King chime in? Probably. But because Trent Brown is such a wild card of a mercurial figure mercurial whatever you want to call him if he's happy content we use the word last year engaged Mm -hmm. because he disengaged at some point but if he's engaged and i don't mean to a woman Mm -hmm. or a man or whoever he wants to be in this day and age um i mean engaged to his job and his sport that's a good thing that's a huge first step for this off because i think if trent brown is not a good left tackle However you get to that point, and yep. whether he's bad and playing or cut, my surprise cut, anything like that, if Trent Brown is not a good left tackle, I think it's going to be hard for this offense to reach whatever its true potential is. I think it's it's a bad first step. If Andy and I are on the Six Rings and Football Things postgame show on WEI following the conclusion of Eagles, five-point favorites still on all of your mobile gambling devices, five-point favorites him. of the Patriots, if we hit the broadcast, let's say it's 425 game, about 735, we go live. And we're talking about how the team that set the single season record for sacks last year, eight up starting tackles, Connor McDermott and, and Calvin Anderson, then it is going to be a long season, friends. Poor Mac. Poor Mac. A uh, gentle reminder that not only can you follow all of our musings at weei.com, of course, we'll be a part of the Rich Keefe show, filling in in many other places throughout the rest of the summer. But stay tuned to Six Rings and Football Things because Mike Cadlick will be helping us out. There will be daily podcasts, whether it's me and Andy, Andy and Mike, me and Mike, some friends from Media Hill, whether it's Mike uh, and Ike, Boston Sport. We're going to have Mike and Ike. <laughs> I like Ike. <laughs> Who knows? We can have Ike Barinholtz. Uh, and congratulations to a uh, friend of the show, Mike Giardi, on getting his new gig with Boston Sports Journal. Glad he's going to be sticking around the area, lending his voice, insight, and analysis to the Boston sports scene, and particularly the Patriots this season. Also, Doug Kide working with Andrew Callahan now over at the Boston Herald. I think the Boston sports coverage is going to be in peak form for this most intriguing season, but you're going to get the best podcast and coverage right here because we'll have daily pods after each and every practice. And we'll have bonus pods. We'll have some live Q&A practices that we will stream. And we'll make sure that we give you guys a chance to come on, ask some questions. We'll send it to a podcast afterwards. It is going to be a big, fantastic season from your Six Rings and Football Things pals. Andy, before we wrap things up and start making way to Foxesboro for camp on Wednesday, any final thoughts? My final thoughts are Patriots fans embrace the optimism now. And I firmly believe this. Some people are going to be like, wait, what? This is Andy. Like, this is Mr. Sour Puss, Sour Beer, Sour Everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now is the time because there is legitimate reason. I posted, I I did the podcast while you were on vacation and I posted the written form this morning on WEEI.com. But there are reasons to believe this Patriots team could be improved from last year. Reasons to believe that could even maybe sneak out a playoff spot Mm -hmm. there. And, and I'm not BSing. This isn't, oh, pa- Paul Perill used to call, call it positive trolling when I did this stuff. Because, yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not in Panderdome right now. No, but guess what? This could fall apart within the next 10 days. And I could be saying the tackles blow. Trent Brown didn't show up. Juju's hurt again. Tyquan Thornton's not out there. Oh my mm. God. What, Christian Gonzalez looks overmatched and we don't even have good receivers. Like that could be a storyline in 10 days. So yeah. enjoy it now because now. Which Star Wars was it? The New Hope? So there was, wasn't there a New Hope? Well, it was the end. Yes. Star Wars Episode 4, the original, was a New Hope. But I think Ooh, Episode 5. Episode, episode 4 is a New Hope. Post-Tom Brady, year one, two, three, four. 
New Hope in New England, baby. Let's and then, go. Next, and then they'll get it together this season, and then next year will be episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. And that's... Oh, see? Look at this. Look, look when I stumble. I'm not even the geek in the room or the dork. That's you. That's Keith. But I just stumbled into how the Patriots are mirroring Star Wars. This is the season of New Hope for now. <laughs> for now. And may the Foxborough Force be with you. Always. I think Andy also just stumbled into a column that'll probably appear tomorrow or Wednesday at WEI. You might have to write that because I don't really I, know the details of the yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, I, I, I can. I'll, H -T I'll make sure to HT you on, uh, <laughs> on that one and say, I can't believe from of all people, I got it from the Sith Lord Andy Hart himself, how Star Wars and the Patriots can mirror each other this season. I'm embracing the positivity as well. I'm praying to God. We aren't talking about, why didn't you sign Leonard Fournette or Dalvin Cook? That's what you get, Belichick. You went cheap with Hopkins. As, as has been a storyline, and Fourier and others have pointed out, Andy, it seems like the Patriots are higher on the talent they have in the locker room and about to take the field for Camp 2023 than a lot of people outside Foxborough. Okay, I'm ready to be proven otherwise, and I want to see it, and then I want to believe it. All right, well, then. Well, and I just we'll end would like that real quick. Yeah. So last year, they were yep. also higher on the coaching than the people outside the building who said this Ugh. is going to be a poop show, Bill. Matt Patricia yep. and Joe Judge can't coach offense. Who was right, the inside the building or the outside the building? Yeah, it was the outside. Let's hope the in hey, let's hope the inside strikes back this so year. They're due. They're due. Yeah, they're, they're due. due. Right. Oh, and that always works out when you gamble. Okay. On that note, we will wrap things up. Thank you guys for tuning into what was a very entertaining, enjoyable return to form with Fitzy and Hat here on Six Rings and Football Things. Thank you once again to Odyssey NFL insider Ross Tucker. Give him a follow at Ross Tucker NFL for the program, uh, for joining us for his thoughts on the season to come as well. It is not going to be Patriots suck. Let's talk about it. Let's hope it's the Patriots are good. And we'll keep talking about it here on Six Rings and Football Things. Camp coverage, ahoy, to come. For producer Justin Turpin, for Patriots beat writer Mike Cadillac, he's Hart. I'm your old pal, Nick Fitzy Stevens. Thanks for listening to Six Rings and Football Things. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. And as always, good day. God bless. Go Pats.